Welcome back to the Home Lab and today we're going to look at something that seems really obvious but you might not have thought about it before. Why, when you buy a set of spanners, do they all come in different lengths? So if you're anything like me, you can't have enough tools around the house to do various jobs. And I have multiple sets all over the place. I keep a few in the house. I keep some in the garage and I have a set in the car. I have a set in my um, old Land Rover uh, and they're Whitworth, of course. So um, that's a whole other story. Uh, you never seem to have the right size and you always see some in the uh, shops that uh, seem better than the ones you've got already. But... I've been using them all of the time, but never really thinking about why they come in all different lengths. Why are the small ones very short, typically, and why are the larger ones much longer? Well, there's a good physics reason for this. So when you look at a set of spanners, um, the ones that undo or do up very small uh, nuts on bolts are usually fairly short. And the ones that are designed to do up and undo uh, large nuts and bolts are usually much bigger. Now, I know you can get uh, really long um, small spanners uh, for long reach and really short stubby large ones. But in general, the small ones have a very short handle and the large ones have a very long handle. So let's have a look at why they're manufactured like this. So in order to explain why spanners are different lengths when they're different sizes, you need to know a little bit about the physics of torque and the effect of forces when they're in a rotational direction. So when you take a, a small uh, diameter nut and bolt, you use a small spanner and when it's tight, you can't really undo it with your fingers. So the first job of the spanner is just to hold on to the nut or the bolt rigidly. But its second job is to give you a good rotational effect of the force you're going to put on. Now, if you had a very short spanner, you'd have to put a very large force on because you're very close to the uh, center of rotation. Whereas when you have a slightly longer spanner, the effect of the force you put on is higher because even though you may be putting a small force on the spanner, it's a long distance from the pivot or the center of rotation. So torque tells you how effective a force is at rotating, and we call this a moment. It's the force at 90 degrees to the direction of the place where the force acts to the center of the pivot multiplied together. So to keep that simple, if you want to undo something that's tight, you can use a small force, but apply that force a long way from the center of rotation. So why do we need bigger spanners for bigger bolts? So perhaps I should have said, why do we need longer spanners for bigger bolts? So here we go. Um, here's a larger bolt and nut, and we normally need a much longer spanner to do up or undo this one. Now, the reason is that these can be done up with a much, much bigger torque. In other words, uh, there's no way you could undo it with your fingers if it was tight. And even if you had a small spanner with a small length uh, with wide uh, jaws, so it fitted the nut, even at this distance, this distance times by the force that you put on it still wouldn't be a big enough torque or a big enough moment to undo the nut. So back to the two reasons we have the spanner and its length. Firstly, it's a rigid end that can get hold of the nut tightly rather than your fingers. And secondly, there is a large distance from the center of rotation uh, to the force that you're applying, and that gives a large moment or a large torque, which enables you to undo or do up the nut with a fairly small force. So you might ask, why go to all this trouble? Why not just make all spanners uh, this long? Well, there are a multitude of reasons, 
But the most important one from the point of view of this video is, imagine what would happen if you made these little small short spanners much, much longer. When you put them on a nut or bolt, imagine putting the force much further away from the pivot. The distance would be much bigger, so the moment or the effective torque would be larger, and you could put huge torques on the nut or the bolt, and what you probably do is tighten it too much or snap it off. Now that's not to say that when you get uh, nuts that are really stiff, there is a little bit of a cheat. Um, you take your spanner and you put a pipe on the end, but you've got to be really careful that you don't put too much force on. And I can tell you, I've certainly broken off uh, many bolts over the years by putting too much torque on a spanner by extending it. So I do hope you enjoyed that video and learned a little bit about torque and moments of forces and you now have a better understanding of why spanners for small nuts and bolts are usually quite short and spanners for much larger nuts and bolts are usually quite a bit longer. Anyway, I'm off to see if I can find a spanner for this nut, though I'm pretty sure it's going to be an incredibly long one. I'll be making another video soon and I look forward to seeing you then.